Hey crew, this week on Effects Talk we are speaking with Ron Bowman, a digital map painter who is currently working in London on projects such as Primeval, Sherlock, Doctor Who, and even a little bit of Mass Effect 3 action. Let's get started. Ron Bowman. Hey, how's it going? The fantastic matte painter from right now working in London for The Mill, is that correct? The Mill, yes. Yes. A lot of people are probably excited right now about the Mass Effect 3 boom. Oh, okay. What was like? What was your involvement exactly for that project? I did matte painting for the, um, the big uh, commercial that they were going to run during the Super Bowl. <laughs> Mass Effect 3, rated M for Mature. I'm actually very interested in hearing about The Mill. For people in general, what is what is The Mill? What is a post house? The Mill um, is one of the more respected VFX houses in London. They are one of the top names in commercials, both in the US and in uh, the UK. As far as television goes, we work on a lot of the iconic shows uh, in Britain, Doctor Who, Torchwood, Primeval, Merlin, and every now and then we do some film stuff. We just recently did Dr. Dredd. How could someone from the United States with like the kind of job market that we have that is a post-work editor go overseas to like London? How do they apply or how do they get their foot in the door? Okay, well, let's see. Back in 2001, um, let's see. I went to San Jose State University where I got a bachelor's degree in illustration and animation. Um, back in 2001, we had a trip to London. They do, uh, they did trips every year or every other year. I took a trip to London and we went for 10 days and we checked out the VFX houses here. Basically, I was really inspired uh, and one of the things was uh, being a beginner back in the Bay Area, I, I kept applying to Pixar and DreamWorks and all that stuff and I kept getting almost hired. They seemed to like me, but they didn't quite hire me, yeah. uh, and so finally London uh, hired me. Uh, when I was at SIGGRAPH, I uh, ran into a guy who said, how would you like to work in London? I said, sure. In your own words, how do you describe what is matte painting to someone? Uh, there's a, a famous book on matte painting called The Invisible Art, and that's what we do. Uh, if we do our jobs correctly, no one knows what we did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Basically, we recreate reality. When there's a big scene, it's just not practical to create it in 3D and texture it, create a whole environment. You know, we um, create that environment um, in a way that's much more economical. That's the, the main thrust of map painting, is just creating backgrounds, creating cityscapes, creating forests, anything you need that would be really difficult to actually create piece by piece. We just paint the thing. What are your go-to programs and tools that you use when you're map painting? Uh, the main tool is Photoshop. At the mill, I do a lot of 3D. Most people use Maya. However, at the mill, I happen to use Cinema 4D. But mainly, a 3D program in Photoshop is all we need, so... How long does it take you, on average, to take a matte painting from start to finish? The average one probably takes, like, a good one. It takes about a week to three weeks, so maybe two weeks, nailing it down. So how did you get onto the Doctor Who projects? Were you kind of chosen for that? and? Where is your level of Doctor Who fandom? I never delve deeply into Doctor Who, but I definitely watch it when they show it late on PBS, you know? Mm. But it's really cool to be part of that lineage, and I feel like it's kind of like the best possible souvenir I could take away from Britain. I know particularly, though, like with your Alien Topia, right, where Amy walks out and looks at the field, and there's those yeah. organic figures, like, being grown out of the ground there. How did you come to design that? Basically, they came to me and said, we need topiaries, the alien planet, and they're going to be all kinds of weird, crazy shapes. So I went through, I did like 20 or so designs, you know, just sketched them out, and then narrowed it down to like basically there's four different kinds of bushes that I have, and I'm going to repeat them. So uh, that's one of the nice things about television, is that, you know, in film you'll have some big time concept artists feeding you guys stuff, and then you'll work on it here, it's like uh, we get to design most everything, really. In general, do you have any words of encouragement or advice to young and inspiring filmmakers or like post-work editors to help get their foot in the door? How do you think it's done? First of all, if you want to live overseas or work overseas, get a degree, okay? Uh, they're they're going to have trouble bringing you overseas. So I have a few friends back home who don't have degrees. They'd like to come over here too, and that's, that's tough. So, you know, spring for that. Do your best to, to develop your eye as much as your skill, really, to make sure. And then, you know, pass it around to as professional people as you can. 
to get judgment on it, maybe like, uh, you know, CG talk or something like that. And uh, so networking, as much as you can, it's tough to break in. That's the toughest thing, really. Uh, if you have your skill and your eye, then you just have to be seen by as many people as you can be seen by. And that's it. A special thank you goes out to Ron Bowman for coming on the show and sharing his insider knowledge and experience. So who do you want me to interview next from the world of digital effects and post-production editing? Leave me a comment below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Garrett Fillon and become a supporter of the Facebook fan page for G Cinema to keep current with all of our content as well as submit questions that will be passed on to the pros in interviews like these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.